in Studio B, star senior forward Yoli Childs. How does that sound to be introduced as a senior forward? Crazy. Absolutely crazy. It, it's so wild how time flies. You always have the, the older guys when you're younger talking about, oh, it's crazy. It goes by so fast, but it really does. It's, it's unreal to me that it's my senior year. Yoli, when you walk into a room, you beam. You got that smile. There's this energy. And this all in spite of coaching change. Uh, you go from NBA draft prep back to BYU. Then comes an unfortunate nine-game suspension. How, how do you keep the smile and the positive attitude on your face when you face some real adversity? I'm, I'm just excited. It's, it's the, the outlook you have on life. That was one of my big takeaways from conference, actually, was I feel like that was mentioned a lot, was just – no matter what's going on, it's it's kind of your decision and and your opportunity to have joy and to be happy. And I'm just so stoked about the positive things that are going on right now, how hard this team's working, the guys I get to play with, and the opportunity to be here at this university. I mean, how could you not be happy, you know? And that's uh, what it's all about because you can't control whether the NCAA suspends you nine games or not, right? I want to come back. Susp what? Okay, I'm just going to have a good attitude. And Nick Emery retires, and Gavin Baxter has a shoulder injury, and... You know, TJ has a scope and whatever. Um, so describe to us what it's like with this team right now because it feels like this team is very focused given the last couple of seasons, given what's happened in the offseason, and with a bunch of seniors. Yeah, no, I, I think we're really locked in. And something I've been thinking about a lot and the guys have been talking about a lot is all the crazy stories, all the, the incredible victories, all the amazing seasons that no one saw coming. How many of them started off with, like, Everything was perfect, and then it ended perfect. <laughs> you know, like yeah, that doesn't that point. doesn't happen. Yeah. You know, the 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 greatest stories are the stories that start with ad adversity and trials and and challenges. Those are the great stories, and that's what this team wants to do. We want to write a great story, not just a good story, not an okay story. We want an amazing story that BYU fans will remember forever. And we've been talking about okay. It, I feel like Mark Pope and this coaching staff will max out what this group can do. We hope it's the NCAA tournament, mm -hmm. right? But is it is it unfair to say it's NCAA tournament or bust? Is that is that too hard of a line to draw? No, not at all. Okay, I think that's the the expectation, especially with this group, is to uh, first off get to the NCAA tournament and then advance when we're there. I think we have so many seniors, we're so smart, and everyone's just working so hard that I mean that's that's obviously the goal. And uh, anything short of that, we we would probably consider a failure. I mean that's. That's what we need to do. It's, it's time. BYU basketball senior forward Yoli Childs on BYU Sports Nation. What is your role now through the first nine games of the season and when you return? How, how will all of that change and evolve? Yeah, I think um, the biggest thing is just being 100% every day. Just being the guy that, that comes and works hard in practice every day because I can see that I'm getting better every day. And then... When I'm able to bring it on the defensive end and push guys on the offensive end, it makes everybody else better. Um, I'm able to come in and be a vocal leader and kind of set the tone, especially for some of our younger guys, and, and show them what's expected. And um, I think just with so many seniors and, and having that leadership role, uh, it could really benefit our team. How are you getting better on the floor? Uh, a ton of ways. I think um, my, my defensive presence is getting better all the time. Um, Coach Pope is is really on me about that, always being the best I can be, being active, talking, communicating, uh, running the floor hard, uh, pushing heard, it on I've the break. I've heard stories about this, about Yoli sprinting the floor the, the like never the, before. It's, it, the transition game, is it's, it's going to open a, a lot of new things for us, especially uh, just putting pressure on the defense, getting teams in foul trouble. Uh, it's it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm excited about it. You shot a but you doubled your three uh, amount of threes you took last year and proved by one percent. Is that something you'll continue to do? Is shoot more threes and hopefully have a higher percentage? Of course. I think a big thing we're focusing on is taking great shots. Mm. So I don't know. It, it'll depend how teams guard me. If I'm open, I'm gonna let it fly, um, but I'm not gonna force anything. I think with with how many options we have and how many guys we have that can shoot the ball and pass and put it on the floor and make plays for each other. Uh, we don't really want to settle for anything other than a really great look. So it's just going to depend on if teams are flying out at me, then I probably won't shoot a ton of threes. If teams are giving me space, then I'll probably shoot some. So, How has the uh, kind of more numbers and metric-based approach uh, affected this mentality in terms of efficiency? It's been really cool. Um, I think something it's, it's done for the guys has helped us not settle. I think a lot of times we have settled for difficult shots that – 
like obviously you make them. Good players make tough shots. But when you break down the metrics and you look at, okay, but if I can just take one more dribble and get to this spot, or if I can get to this shot, over the course of a game and over the course of the season, it makes us so much better. So just being able to see what actually works and what doesn't is is really awesome. Have any of those numbers validated or, I guess, changed your mind on, wait, I thought I was good at this, but the numbers show that I'm not as good and I need to focus on that? Anything like that? Um, I think the biggest thing is as a team, uh, one of our numbers that was really poor last year was our spot-up defense. Um, what does that, that mean? That means uh, when you're closing out to a three-point shooter. The, Who's in a spot, catch yeah, and shoot? Yeah, spot, catch and shoot, okay. or put it on the floor. Our closeouts weren't great, and that's not something that we really realized. So that's been a big emphasis all summer is being there on the catch, not giving up wide open threes. Uh, I think we looked at a metric the other day that showed percentages of college players across the country on their catch and shoot threes versus when they just have to adjust and put the ball on the floor one time, and uh, it, it drops a ton. So mm -hmm. just little things like that. BYU Basketball Media Day on BYU Sports Nation continues. We are talking with Yoli Childs, BYU senior forward. What does a guy like Jake Toulson do to alleviate some of the pressure that you and TJ Hawes feel as the leaders of this team? Well, Jake, first off, is an unbelievable player. Uh, he's a three-level scorer. He brings a lot of energy and intensity, but he's just a natural leader. He's a guy that, that walks in the gym and uh, exudes confidence and he really knows how to lead a team both vocally and uh, by example. And he's just a guy that brings it every day. And it's really fun. We're both super competitive, and so is TJ. And we're able to push each other and compete and talk smack a little bit throughout <laughs> practice. And it, it brings a lot of energy, so it's fun. Now, you're competing against him right now because, as BYU should, prepare to play the first nine games without you. So you spend some time with the practice squad, and you, and you go head-to-head -head with TJ Haas and Jake Toulson. What's that dynamic like? It's fun. I mean, we switch it up. So a lot of times I'm with that group, and uh, certain times I'm on the, the second group, and certain times I'm on the practice squad group. So um, it's a fun dynamic of getting to play with a lot of different guys that I haven't been able to play with. And it's always fun when you can beat Jake and Tej and those guys. <laughs> it's always fun. How often does that happen? Often. <laughs> no, Jake's on here soon. It, it, uh, it happens every once in a while. I mean, we're, we're really deep. A lot of the guys that we have that are practice squad guys or our walk-ons are really good basketball players. And, and the sit-out guys, right? Yeah. Barcelo, yeah. Harvard, yeah. Bowl. Barce yeah. They're awesome. Rich is a load. Barcelo's incredible. Wyatt can really stretch the floor. So uh, it's, it's definitely a really good team. That's awesome. Let's talk about the uh, the role that maybe pick and roll could play on this team, which the NBA has gone heavy pick and roll the last mm -hmm. couple of years. Uh, yes, in college, some St. Mary's has done it a ton over the years, but will that will we see more pick and roll this season? Yeah, I think that's one of Coach Pope's best qualities is his ability to teach the pick and roll and to teach the reads off of that. Uh, I, I've learned a ton on how to be a roll man and what reads to make when you get the catch and. Uh, it's, it's crazy how much not only I've grown, but all the post players and the guards have grown in the pick and roll game, just breaking it down day by day. Who are the guys in the post that are going to carry the load with you and Gavin out early in the season? First off, Dalton Nixon's been amazing. He's, he's been incredible. He's shooting the ball really well from three. Uh, he makes quick decisions. He pulls down rebounds. His touch looks great. Colby Lee's been very good offensively, especially. Uh, he's getting more active on defense, getting his hand on some shots, and uh, he's, he's looking really good. So those two, I think, will do a really good job of holding it down. Give us a sense, too, of, uh, I guess, how Jesse Wade's played and some of those guys, are some of the newcomers that set out. Yeah, no, Jesse's been awesome. He can, he can shoot the ball, that's for sure. He's, he's confident shooting the ball anywhere. Whether uh, the hand's down, it's going up. If he's open, it's pretty much over. He can, he can really shoot the ball. But um, that's been something I've been impressed with with the guys is uh, everyone's putting in a ton of extra work on their shots. And uh, it, it's just, it looks beautiful. Our offense looks amazing. What does it mean to you to not have Gavin probably for this season? That was, a, that was some big news a couple weeks ago. Oh, man, that, that hurt a lot, especially just the type of guy Gavin is, you know. You, you obviously look at from a basketball standpoint and, and how hard it's going to be not having him, the, the things he's done. He's put on 15, 20 pounds of muscle. He was looking amazing. He was, he was huge and still jumping out of the gym and playing hard and finishing. So obviously you look at that stuff, but, you know, just as a person, like this year is going to be really, really hard for him. And he's such a great guy, and he's someone I've played with since I was 16, you know, and 
I really just feel for him and, and what he's going to go through. But I know he's going to be there to support us every day. And um, we're going to try to be there and, and make sure he feels involved and feels like he's a part of the team still. And you just feel for him. It's a yeah. sucky situation. And um, he's going to try to make the best out of it. We're going to try to make the best out of it and just try to move forward. Yeah, he'll get the red shirt and then uh, be back next year. You guys had an NBA combine kind of simulation a couple weeks ago. Who had the higher vertical between you two? Because there was oh, some gosh. pictures and some video, and it was Gavin. impressive. Yeah, Gavin's got me beat. He, ma he maxed out, didn't he? By no, yeah, much. no, Gavin's a, Gavin's a freak of nature. I think he he had me by uh, two inches probably. Okay. Wait. That's a lot, though, when you, when you look yeah. at uh, verticals. Yeah. So, yeah, he's a freak. So what's your vertical versus his, then? I think mine was... About thirty-seven, and he was he was pushing a forty. Whoa! If you're six, if you're six nine, pushing a forty, and you're pushing vertical? a forty-inch yeah. vertical. Okay. It's. I mean, that's. <laughs> it's freakish. It's what, amazing. Was that cool, by the way? I. I mean, you had probably done some of this in your uh, NBA preparation, but yeah. for the whole team to go through this. It was cool. I was really impressed with our guys and the numbers that we produced. When it when it came down to the lateral quickness drills, there's a lane agility and a pro agility drill. Our guys on average tested higher than the guys at the NBA Combine. That's the most elite wow. college players in, in college basketball. So the fact that we're moving better laterally than all those guys is, is pretty impressive. All right. We like to hear these things. Love to hear hey, That's great, man. Yes. You're to bringing smiles to our faces. <laughs> Studio B. Let's give you some karma for the season. Um, we appreciate the way you rep the Y, man. Thanks for coming in. Appreciate you guys having me on. Hey, it's always a good time. You guys